Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Advent is the season when we very intentionally prepare our hearts to celebrate the birth of Jesus, this long-awaited arrival of the Savior and King. And this Christmas, we dive into the Word, and we're going to see how all of Scripture is pointing to this beautiful baby in a manger, the event that changed everything. To begin this Advent season, let's start with the beginning of everything, with creation. Light and life swirled around the earth as God spoke everything into existence. And there in the center of his creation was man and woman, created in his image. Adam and Eve lived in the Garden of Eden, and there they thrived in free will, lush gardens, and beautiful creations of God. But most importantly, they lived in perfect relationship with God. They needed nothing. They belonged to God. They were valued by God. They had purpose in God. This is what God has always intended for them and for us. But in the center of the garden, a fallen angel described as a serpent brought temptation and pride into God's creation. This serpent led Eve and Adam to disobey God's commands. And there at the beginning of creation, the first rebellion causes a separation between humanity and God. And again, for the first time, humanity experienced something that they never have before, hopelessness, shame. Their world was thrown into chaos, and they questioned their belonging, their value, and their purpose. For the first time, we learned that without God, we have nothing, and we are naked and afraid. When God found the two lost children, he informed them of the consequences of their rebellion. Man and woman's relationship will be strained by pride. The ground will be cursed with hardness and thorns. We will struggle to work and toil that same ground. From dust we were formed and given life, but without God, we we will turn back into dust through our meaningless toil. But here's the beauty of Advent. The first time humans experience the hopelessness and the consequences of sin, our God was right there to point them to his perfect plan of redemption. Genesis 3.15 is actually the first gospel proclamation of Jesus Christ. And this is what it says. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. If it isn't obvious to you, let me explain. We now know that God is addressing sin and death here the things that keep us separated from him. We will work and toil and mess up in this life, but we will know somewhere deep down we're missing the most important piece of us, the relationship with God. And that will cause hostility between us and evil. And God is pointing down the line of humanity and saying, you wait, because someday there will come a baby born of a virgin, and this baby will grow up and strike the head of the evil one, killing it once and for all. And this man will also take on to himself every single sin and poison from our rebellion. The evil one will strike his heel and he takes on to himself the death that Satan tried delivering that day. Even at the beginning, the very beginning, God wanted us to know he's too good, too powerful to let this take us. And so he tells us to wait because there is good news to come. And the birth of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection was this good news and plan all along. And even today, as we live our lives and experience hopelessness from our own sin and rebellion, God is still here to tell us the same exact message he did at the very beginning. I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And he has made a way for you to live in your original purpose again in perfect relationship with God. Calvary. I hope your heart's jumping for joy as God continuously points us to the feet of Jesus. In this season, as we get to celebrate his birth, I hope you remember God is too good, too powerful to let your sin and shame and hopelessness win in your life. Find your true purpose and value again by believing in Jesus and being saved. Love you a lot, Calvary. Have a good one.